Hello YouTube, uh, continuing in my opening novelty series, I'm going to show you another, another novelty um, that I think is really interesting. And um, this one I'm actually going to kind of place in the category of totally crazy. Um, and I will show you a couple of these types of novelties that I think are really just on the edge of kind of being almost nuts. Uh, but my um, work on them and my understanding of the positions has shown me that, that they have some value and that they're maybe a little bit more interesting than people think they are. This one is uh, played in the, uh, I believe it's called the Shreshnikov Sicilian or the Pelican Sicilian, um, is what I usually call it. Um, and this specifically comes out of the move order within the time and off variation. Um, and it begins after e4, c5, knight f3, e6. And this is a pretty common move order. d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight c6. Now, one of the frustrations that a lot of white players have is maybe they have preparation against other versions of this opening. Like there's another version of this opening where uh, black starts with knight c6 and then instead of e6 plays e5, and then after knight to b5, you know, maybe we'll see something like uh, d6, knight on one to c3, maybe now a6, uh, knight, back to e, knight back to a3, b5, and now knight d5. This is theoretical. Another version that gets played a lot is they will throw in um, knight f6 early. They'll play knight f6 and force you to defend with knight c3 and then play e5. And now knight b5, d6, and now they get to play bishop c5. And this is a common 10 that they get to play a6, knight a3, b5, knight d5, and now we've achieved another a highly theoretical position, or you can play bishop takes f6 here and double the pawns, and g takes f6 and then knight d5. And this is maybe the, the position that I think a lot of players as white try to get to. Um, this was certainly something that Fisher uh, liked to try to get to, and he really felt like he had the most opportunity to play for a win with white if he could double black's pawns. He felt like this gave him the best chances. And the theoretical lines here are very long and very deep. Um, f5 is the main line, bishop b5 is kind of out of um, repute now, mostly people just take, take, they play c3, they retreat the knight to c2, and they play a4, and this is considered main line theory, and this is considered slight advantage white. So people kind of like to play this stuff, so this novelty is kind of a way to try to get back to the main line, because one of the things that these other move orders do is they take your main lines away, and this was a frustration that Fisher had. And one of the ideas that Fisher introduced was after knight b5, this is a common move, focusing on this weakness, d6, bishop f4, hitting this weakness again, e5, bishop e3, now after knight f6, Fisher would actually bring the bishop back to g5 because he was just so obsessed with playing this move. Now, of course, there was a famous game. Fisher actually got into a lot of trouble uh, with the white pieces in one of his uh, candidates' matches games. And the reason he got into a lot of trouble was after black just proceeded with a good, solid developing move, white had nothing better than to do the same. And then after a6, knight a3, um, the problem that white ran into is that d5 is just a very powerful move. Fisher basically just intends to double these pawns and plant his knight on d5 and have a good position, but he can't do that if black basically stops him with the move d5. And the problem is, is this knight on a3 is hanging, so after e takes d5, we had uh, something like bishop a3, and nothing really seemed to work in these positions, takes, Queen a5, queen b2 was forced, and then castles queenside. And even though Fisher actually ended up getting a good result in this game, I would say that this is clearly slight advantage black, um, possibly even a little bit more than that. This, this ended up being a very good position for the person with the black pieces. So this was a very good position for his opponent. So it did not work out very well. So they've made some adjustments to this opening recently. And this is the line I would recommend to a lot of people. This is not the totally crazy line I'm about to show you. But the alternative is, of course, 
when you play bishop g5, bishop e6, you need to be prepared to retreat this knight back to the c3 square. So instead of developing this knight to c3, you develop this knight to d2. And then after a6, you have the retreat knight to c3, and your position is, of course, totally reasonable. And this has been played by several top grandmasters so with the white pieces, and white can continue to just play a, a normal kind of position where he has some sort of slight edge. What I'm going to show you is totally nuts. I'm going to show you a way that you can continue to try to play this bishop g5 idea without losing a tempo. So after e5, my recommendation, or not really my recommendation, because I'm, I'm a little unclear on this myself, but a possible move, which may not be bad, um, is to this. So you can play here. And this at first just looks like a, a mistake. It looks totally crazy. Of course, if they play knight of 6, you transpose with bishop g5. The reason it was totally crazy is it's leaving the bishop hanging. And of course, they can just take it right away. So that's the first move we need to look at is what happens if they just take the bishop right away. Okay, if they take the bishop right away, we can play knight d5. And at this point, there is no preventing knight c7 check. And it is absolutely true at this point that black has to give at least some material back, which suggests that maybe this is somewhat sound for white. So, for example, if black tries to keep the material, he is getting checkmated. Queen g4 is mate. Well, after f5. So, he can't keep the material that way. Also, if he tries to keep the material with, say, a queen check, he actually just creates more problems for himself. We play c3, and we're still threatening this check, but we're also threatening, like, he doesn't have a king d8, for example, because his queen is also almost trapped here. Uh, his queen doesn't really have anywhere to go, and when we move back here with the queen, we're also threatening his queen with our bishop, so this is also kind of a no-go. The queen check is not going to help anything. So the best move here for black is just to play bishop e6 and let white go ahead and harvest this nut, this rook, and we have a situation where black has two pieces and white has a rook, and we've got one more move that we can play to try to kind of coax a, a mistake. We can play bishop b5, pinning the knight to the king. We're kind of trying to get him to play a6, and we got one more little trap we can fork. And also, it makes it difficult for him to take the knight, because then we're taking back with the pawn. Now, at this point, I'm not really 100% sure how to assess this position. I think maybe the position's equal. Um, it could be slight edge black. It could be slight edge white. I, I'm not really sure. I know that uh, black's king is still in the middle. I know that c4, c5 is a possibility that's open. I know that black is going to have to go to a, a little bit of work to kind of unwind his pieces. Like, for example, I feel like he has to play bishop e7 before he can play knight of 6. I know that white can always try to harvest this pawn with a move like knight of 4. And also, I know that white's play from this point is very simple. He's going to castle, he's going to play queen f3, he's going to play c4, and possibly c5, and maybe rook d1, and continue with just this very simple, straightforward plan. This is really easy to follow, whereas black, even though he's got two pieces for the rook, it's not so clear how he proceeds from here to um, take advantage of the fact that he has two pieces for the rook. So I just, I'm going to say the position from here is very unclear. So that makes us try to look at maybe alternatives, like maybe taking here on f4, if it leads to an unclear position, it's maybe not so good. Maybe we have a better idea than that unclear position. Maybe that's the best idea. Maybe that's the most we're going to get. It's just this lack of clarity. The alternative is we could play knight of six, go back into the main line. Another alternative is a6, hitting this knight. Now two pieces are hanging. We have a bishop hanging on f4 and a knight hanging on uh, b5. And then here I recommend, uh, you know, if you play one crazy move, why not play two? You know, so here's the next crazy move, bishop g5. And of course, what's interesting is that there's another... Um, there's another sacrifice involving this bishop g5 without a6. And in that case, I, I do really feel like it's unsound. Because if you don't have an a6, when they take the bishop and you play your check and you take here, there's no way for this knight to get back out. Um, in this case, if they take this bishop, if queen takes bishop, not only am I playing this check and taking this rook, but I have a very clear exit strategy. I'm going to play knight b6, and then I'm going to play knight d5. And that just basically means you just gave me a rook for a piece, and white's just done a clear exchange. So taking the bishop doesn't make any sense at this point, not with the move a6 in. 
So with the bishop here on g5, it seems like the only logical move is to either transpose back into the main line with knight f6, which is what white wanted to do. He wanted to force black into the main line. Or black can try to continue to play something unique uh, with f6 and just try to win a piece. This is kind of what um, white was going for, and this is kind of what I was aiming for when I came up with this type of preparation, is I wanted to get something like this because my instincts told me this is, it's very difficult to finish the development of the kingside pieces. And is that going to be worth a piece? I don't know. But it could be because there is other things going on in the position that are equally interesting that I'm not 100% sure about. So the first thing is, okay, how to proceed from here. So knight d5. Okay, so we got craziness going on. All of our pieces are hanging. At this point, they're going to have to take something. They don't want to take the bishop because, again, we have a check and we have an easy exit strategy. So we don't want that. So we're going to have to take the knight. And then the bishop comes back to e3. Now, we're down a whole piece for nothing at this point. And that's why I call this totally crazy. We're just down a whole piece for nothing. But we have threats. And those threats actually aren't terribly easy to meet. And the threats are, are really simple, but they're not easy to meet, and it's not easy to meet them in a clear way that makes sense. And there's maybe a half dozen moves that black can play here and proceeding from here, and none of them seem to satisfy total equality or slight advantage black. It's really unclear. I, that's all I can do to describe this position. This position might be better for black. It might be equal. It might be better for white. And I don't really have a real handle on on the assessment. I mean, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're, you're, you're maybe saying, no, no, I, I know this position is better for, for black or whatever. But, you know, again, as I've said in previous videos, I challenge you to look at it on your computer and uh, don't trust the assessment. Play against it and see what it does. And, um, you know, it's, it's very difficult to fully assess this position. So bishop b6 followed by knight c7 is the threat. So if it were white's move right now, and if black plays any kind of normal looking move, like maybe knight e7 is normal looking and this would be disastrous. Um, we can attack this queen and we can play check and we can take this rook. So that's the threat. So understanding the threat is the first part of kind of understanding, okay, what maybe we have to do to meet this position. But when you start looking at ways to meet this threat, you don't run into a whole lot of things that make sense because I'm also threatening to harvest this pawn with bishop takes b5 and protecting Zoli. For example, if rook a6, bishop takes b5. Rook a6 certainly met the threat of bishop to b6, but now I take here, and I'm just threatening to take the rook and still play bishop b6. So that's still on the table, and there's no threat against this bishop. Queen a5 check, I just play simply, I play c3. This bishop is not hanging. If queen takes bishop, we have knight c7 check picks up the queen, and I'm still threatening the rook. So it's not so simple, you can't just play a move like rook a6 and call it a day. And other moves don't seem to offer much either. I mean, for example, after queen a5 check c3, we run into this similar problem. This pawn is still hanging. This threat is still hanging. We still have bishop to b6. I mean, interestingly, we transpose. Like if rook a6, we still, have, we still just play bishop takes b5, and we, we have all the same problems we had a move ago. Um, I'll go ahead and... Uh, you know, just say, okay, there's there's a half dozen different moves you can play here. Interestingly enough, what the computer gives, I mean, knight d4 is possible. Maybe in this case, I just kick away the knight. I play c3, and then the best square for the knight is maybe knight e6. And, uh, bishop b5 check, bishop d7, bishop takes d7 check. And at this point, you don't want to play king d7 or either one. We play knight b6 and pick up the rook. So king d7 or queen d7, knight b6, knight takes a8. And we're getting, um, again, plenty of compensation for whatever is going on here. So that's another possibility. The, the line that I'll give you, and, and again, I'm not 100% sure if this is the best line because there's just so many possibilities here, and it's a whole piece. The line I'll give you is the line the computer kind of shoots out as best, which is king f7. It also shoots out, like, uh, king f7, yeah, just king f7, different ideas kind of surrounding this. And, I mean, I'll just say it, this is very unclear. I don't really know what's going on. So, like, bishop b6, queen b7, and then just bishop takes b5, just a very calm move. We don't want to, you know, give away everything right away with knight to c7, rook b8, because we want to get a little bit more 
um, kind of, we'll just say we want to get a little bit more juice out of the position. So queen b4 is, again, this is not a human recommendation, this is a computer recommendation. I think if it were me, if it's a human being playing this position, you're going to play other moves uh, here. Maybe you'll play g6 to try to safeguard your king, maybe you'll play rook b8 to sidestep with the rook. The difficulty with these other moves is uh, they all seem to be inferior to the computer tries. So the computer recommendation, if you know that, you've, you've pretty much you know enough about this to, to play it and then try to figure out kind of what is unsound about these other moves. For, for one thing, there's a lot of threats, like knight c7 is a threat, bishop c4 is a threat, and queen d5 is a threat after the knight moves, and this king is very uncomfortable. So that's why a lot of these direct tries are kind of the most playable. And again, these are all kind of computer moves. F3... We don't want to exchange queens, and we're more than willing to give up this pawn in exchange for this open file, which we're still holding, and of course control of the g6 square, which puts um, black's king in a very uncomfortable situation. And the whole point of all this is that white just intends to do something simple like knight c7. And I'm attacking this rook, I'm threatening to take it for free, but that's not the big threat. Um, the big threat, the million dollar threat, is going to be a move like queen d5 check coming. When we don't have a good place to put our king where we're not just dying. So, and then another difficulty is, is like if we move this knight, we run into other issues where we can also get hit from behind here. This bishop can come back this way and we can hit the king as well. So, the bishop can hit from behind. We can, of course, still take this. In this case, we have an issue with our rook hanging, so we do need to be careful and we need to defend that. And overall, I'm just going to say, you know, in short, this position is really wild. Like, I have no idea, you know, kind of what the proper assessment of this position is, other than the fact that white has a lot of play for this entire piece, for this whole piece of material that he's given to black. White has an awful lot of play. And it's not at all clear to me um, that this is remotely a bad position for white, even though white is down a whole piece. I have no idea how black is going to complete his development and survive. I have no idea how black is going to avoid the worst of some of these major problems that can occur in the position. I have no idea how black is going to try to hold this rook. So maybe I just get the material back. Maybe I just get compensation. It doesn't seem like black has time to do any of these things. And it's not, it's not clear to me what the best line is. If you do come across this line and you're playing it as black, my recommendation is the very first line I showed you, that's actually the line I have the most faith in for black. I feel like given the alternatives and given the craziness of this F6 stuff, I think that your best bet is black. You have, I think, really two options that in my mind make sense when you're facing this. One of them you may not want to do because your, your instincts might be to refute something like this. But one, I think, really clear option is you can just transpose. You can play knight f6, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with transposing it into the main line. So that's one recommendation I have for black. Just transpose into the main line and call it a day. Another recommendation I have is if you don't want to transpose into the main line and you do want to refute this, I do recommend this move. I think this is less dangerous than allowing this other kind of crazy alternative, unless your intention is, again, just to transpose into the main line, a6, bishop, g5, knight f6. It's perfectly reasonable to play it this way, and you can just play the main line. I don't know if I'm brave enough to play these positions as black, even though maybe the objective assessment is that black is better. If you're brave enough, go ahead and do it, but it's something you want to look at. Um, although I think the odds of you even seeing this are very rare. This is a big novelty, it's not, very widely played. It's not played very much at all. And this is the reason that this is in my novelty opening series, so that you can play these moves against people and you can surprise them. So my recommendation is by some miracle you face this, I, I would recommend you take, because it seems like these lines give black the best chances. Just make sure you don't play a6. <laughs> play maybe bishop e7 and knight f6 and then proceed to play chess from there. And I think these positions are roughly equal. Um, anyway, so that was a novelty uh, against uh, the Pelican variation of uh, the, the Open Sicilian. So I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope that novelty helps your play.